Hello, this is a quick note about um, the formation of high, high uh, pressure systems in the North Atlantic uh, versus uh, North Pacific. Uh, this came up in a class, our weather class, uh, weather online weather course question today uh, concerning the relative stability of these two high patterns. Generally, our sailing routes around the world uh, are around, we sail around these highs, and then the lows just come in and get in our way. And so, here, and then these are summertime, basically they get more stable to the extent they're stable in the summertime. So I'm looking at here, I'm going to start this simulation. So you see, there's a simulation. And I'll tell you, and we're looking at these highs, and here, here's over here on the Pacific, and then here's over here on the Atlantic, and then um, that's that's and that's showing how they're moving. And then this is starting in June, and this is the Pacific High starting to form up, and here's the Atlantic High over here, and um, and I'm using Luck Grib, and the, I'm using the program Luck Grib, and I'm viewing the climatic climate forecast system. Uh, that gives uh, these predictions of the isobars and the winds out uh, out about six months. They're out six months every, um, I think maybe every six hours or so. And you can, in fact, you can do routing. You can do routing with these uh, with these long-term forecasts in uh, in both Luck Grib or in uh, QTVLM. We'll do routing with these. We just have to keep in mind that the wind. The winds have to be corrected here a little bit. The winds in this model are at, I, I think, 1,000 millibars, not at uh, conventional uh, 10 meters. So that has to be corrected. Both those programs make that correction. And so then we're just running this, and this is stepping through. You can see the rate we're going through. And here's this high forming up. Underneath is a value. This is a peak high in the middle of 1025. These isobars, oh gosh. Uh, uh, let me just double check on the isobars. They're two millimeter, two isobar, two um, uh, two uh, millibars apart here in this picture. The conventional on maps is a four, but uh, I think for this we could we just leave it at two, and then and so we'll go. And so this, and here is what ultimately we want to see is that in the Pacific, these are a more standard. Uh, uh, more predictable and a standard location and that's forming up in just about the right place right there. Oh, let me stop there. Well, not quite. What we're looking for is what we call blocking high and a blocking high means it has to be high above 1030, has to be about right and the about right spot is between, if you draw a rum line from up here down to Hawaii, it's about in, about in the middle of that off the coast, off San Francisco somewhere here. So that's about the right spot. So we're looking for one in about the right spot and that is high and has at least two round isobars and that is uh, uh, four that's that's a standard four millibar isobars um, ah that throws off this analysis where there are two but anyway we'll work we'll work around that um, 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 okay so let's start and no so this guy's trying he's trying but he's still not He's still not round, and he's still not uh, he got these two, you know, two isobar, two or four millibar isobars around it. So, and then, uh, okay, so here we see over here that this one's filling up. Now, it, here's the other thing we're going to be seeing as we go through here. The Pacific High is generally here. It can be anywhere in the ocean here, but its normal climatic stable home is right about there. In the Atlantic, there is really no such thing. There is a pre Ponderance of highs around this area, that's the Azores, and that's called the Azor High, or it could be down here, and it's called the Bermuda High. So it, the, the Atlantic High is not such a unique term as Pacific High. So uh, look at this. This guy doesn't know what he's doing. He's going to go clear across from the Azores all the way to Bermuda. But uh, we just watch and see what's going on here as we uh, as we continue this, uh, uh, continue the Oh, okay, I got to start it there. Okay, ah, now stop. Let me stop here. Now, look at this. 
the idea is this guy now here, I don't know what date this is, but this this has now got just about a blocking high criteria. It's high. It's got several round isobars around here. So, and that's like Saturday. And so one would expect this to, and what all that means is it's probably going to be like this for a couple days. That would be the guess. Now, I don't know what happens here with this uh, with, with, with this animation we're looking at, but somewhere along here, and I don't know when, maybe this was this way Friday. I don't no, um, I could go back a little bit, but let's just look at that now and just see how long it stays here. In other words, blocking means that this guy, this low, is not going to beat it down. It's going to get pushed over the top of it. The winds aloft are coming up and down, looking like that, going up and down. So if this guy is nice and strong, this guy coming in, trying to come this way, is just going to get pushed, squashed up that way. And when this is weaker, this is going to blast right through it. So that's that situation. Let's just keep going. Okay, Saturday. Look at this. Sunday. This guy, he sent, so that high sent that guy packing, right? And over here, what do we have going on? So here's this high forming up over here, nice and stable. Let's stop for a minute. What do we got going? Right in between the two. So this high is not Azor, it's not Bermuda. It's just sitting there. Again, notice that this is more or less always right in this area, and the highs here on the Atlantic side are moving all over everywhere. Now we've we got the, this is faded out. There's basically no high, no nice predictable route going across the, going across the ocean here for till this high forms up again. Now there's a, there's a high forming up here. Uh, here's one. We just again. Let me let me just stop for a second. Our sailing routes, like I say, are around these highs. That's how we get where we're going. We're sailing around these highs, and from here you're going. From up here, you take the so-called Columbus route. Columbus route from from up here down around over to here, and uh, but we're just looking at these. I'm gonna let this run for a while, and then we'll just watch and see. Uh, I haven't seen any really nice here. See, these don't last very long over here compared to these highs over here. This is one you might call, well, see, it didn't even last very long. And this guy, this big old uh, Pacific high, now that's not as stable as it could be if it were over here. This high still right in the middle of these two, so that nomenclature is not that, not that really good. Here you might call that a Bermuda high down here. I'm not sure how that goes. This guy is, and here comes another guy, he's just, but you see, he's kind of flattened him out. He wasn't big and strong enough to block him, so it just kind of pushed it down. He can't build up himself till this guy gets out of the way. Now, this is, this is what be Azor's high up in here, like that. There's no relationship, really, between what's here and what's here, as a general rule. I mean, it could be things are going up and down and back, but as a rule, there you can't correlate what's here and what's here at all. And um, the other thing you can look at is sometimes these, a low will form, a low, we can see a lot of things here, a low will form over this desert, you see. When that low forms here and this high comes up, this really packs up very strong winds right along this coast here. Now there's a Bermuda high trying to form here. Now that guy's almost back. In the, see that packing up those isobars right in there temporarily? That makes 30, 40 knots of wind on the coast here right here when that happens. This big low, these are just thermal lows on the deserts along here, and then the high trying to creep in there, packing up against it. What do we got going? Now we're still in July. Now this guy, as a rule, not necessarily, we're not necessarily seeing it in this forth, forthcoming six months climatic prediction, General, generally July and August is when this high, when this Pacific high starts really settling in here and really hanging in there. There it looks like that would be called a, uh, a Azores high. You see, look at that, bang, that's a beautiful Azores high. There's your classic nice Azores high right here, sitting there. And it's kind of like, you see, it's blocked that guy. It sit there, got nice and round, and became a little blocking high right there. So you can use that concept in the Atlantic, but it just doesn't happen as often. It just doesn't happen as often. So what else do we see? See, there's 30 knots along the coast here. These lows are here. Uh, what's happening? Here the highs are washing all around. Still what you would call Azores High, I guess, up here. 
Now we're in August. Look, this is not particularly this is not particularly good news for summer ocean sailing here because one would expect by August that this high would be formed up right here and just sitting there like a rock and it is not at all the forecast is not at all doing that this year. Uh, again, we can't believe this. This is climate. Remember, we're looking at climate data, and we sail in the weather. We don't sail in the climate. So this is just, uh, uh, it's just something you might look at if you're planning something that's three or four months ahead of time. You might run a route with this data to see, to see what, what, you, what you've got going. Here's a high. Okay, now... Let's see him, if he's going to build up here. We should be, to make this more sensible, but it's more complicated, we can overlay, do this again, and overlay the uh, 500 millibar winds. That helps understand when and why these things form. Now, there's that guy is a, a big monster high, 1036, uh, right out here. I maybe missed, here's like an Azores high, and... Okay, so that's the way that looks. Uh, I'll just let this run a little bit. Um, the winds, you read the winds up here. And this is, again, the program Luck Grib is one of the, f maybe the only place that I know, actually it's the only place I know where you can get a nice long-term latitude range that you want display of the climatic forecast system data. Plus, their viewer, which we're using here, we're using a Macintosh version of LuckGrib running this, and uh, it also has an iPad or iMac, uh, phone uh, iOS version as well as iMac, as well as a Mac version. And so you see it's a beautiful way to look at the statistics. And then, then you can overlay on top of that, um, uh, you can overlay on top of that the winds aloft. This model also does produce the winds aloft, geostrophic. I mean, the, the winds at uh, 500 millibars. So there you see, this guy's really now pretty firm. Now, we're getting into September. That's kind of the end of things. But you see, the high does, does uh, give you time, if it's September, still time to have a steady, you know, in principle, a nice ride over the top of this to come in home. But it's always dicey when you start getting into September for this, these, condition, these conditions. And the, the Atlantic, the main thing we're seeing here is the Atlantic compared to the Pacific. The highs are all over the place more often than in the Pacific. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm going to uh, stop this demo at that point and then maybe come back and show the Southern Hemisphere, which is a whole different story.